Welcome to Iowa Pagan News, your informative internet radio station catering to all pagans worldwide. We are dedicated to bringing you the very best in music, news, events, and lots of fun stuff. Come tune into our new podcast at www.plrdn.podbean.com. Now, here is your host, Lou Silverwolf Williams. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Iowa Pagan News on the Prairie Land Radio Network. And again, I want to say thank you to my good friend Gina Ackley for doing the intros for us. We do appreciate her assistance in this. Tonight, we're getting into part three with our good friend Kavana Charlotte. And uh, hopefully this will uh, end off the uh, series that we've been doing with uh, Kavana. I know it's been... This has been spread out over, what, two years now? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's like been the, the the COVID special. Like it started at the beginning and then it's, yeah, it's just kept going. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Okay. Now, um, the topics that we decided that we're going to get into tonight. Uh, one with everything that's going on in the world and with, people using their abilities to try to assist people um, when it comes to them wanting to share information with people, but unsure about if they should or not uh, and how they should go about uh, going to somebody with information that they have, if they feel it's going to be ethical or not. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll take that into a couple different parts because there's a, a few things so one was you know how do people share um right their mm -hmm. their gifts or what they have and then the other was um sorry i'm i might um and then the other you know is if is it ethical you know and then what and then what was your third question it was something about uh about them listening or something yeah, with like I said, with everything that we have going on in the world right now, and trying uh, with people with their abilities, trying to assist others, and trying to help make their lives better. Um, there's been conversations on whether or not to charge, and then he had a third part of it though. Well, I'll just right. get the and yeah. then a third part will probably come up. So how do you help people? Well, you know, the thing is, it's sort of like, you know, the Wild West, right? In terms of helping people. Mm -hmm. You have to realize there's there's healers that have like a little tiny bit more knowledge than other people. And there's healers that have a whole lot more information and knowledge mm -hmm. than other people, right? Right. So it, it almost, it doesn't, there's lots of people that can share something. And I find that, there's lots of people that can receive something. So it's just those people will naturally find the people they resonate with. Right. And you can't, you don't want to force people into a certain situation or say, this is the only way or the right way, because it's very, you know, everybody's had that experience where they hear something 50 million times. And on the 50th time, holy crap, I finally get it. <laughs> phrased it a different way or did a different hand gesture or looked a different way and or it's just the right moment and then that information sinks in right so mm -hmm. lots of different people are expressing things in different ways so um you know what's going to happen is is you know a person can go to one healer and learn a little bit they can you know grow and then find another healer or another teacher that kind of teaches them something you know and grows in a different way and it doesn't mean that one healer is right or one healer is wrong or you know mm -hmm. any of that it just means that everybody's got different things that they're showing people um that can help different people grow in different ways now does that mean that, that all healers are ethical and all teachers are ethical no I, i'm not saying that but yeah. i'm saying that there's lots of different people out there that you can learn from um and so Really, I mean, if you look at things from the business perspective, people are going to pay or people are going to invest their time where they feel like they're getting value. Mm -hmm. um, 
So, you know, is it, and there's always been a big question of ethics, right? Like, is it ethical to charge money for spiritual information or knowledge? And some of that mm-hmm. comes down to, you know, even at the church, you know, maybe people have some sort of programming usually, you know, because they're like, oh, Jesus wandered around, you know, mm-hmm. different towns and he didn't charge money. No, he didn't, but he actually had a lot of investors. A lot of the women that were working with him had, they were investing his group to take boats and to go wherever and go to village. And, and so that's, mm-hmm. so was he, you know, it's like a rock band basically, right. Going on, right. going around, they still have the rock band still has the stage and they still have the stuff and they're still, you know, have their meals paid for or whatnot. So Ooh. in of healers right here right now I mean, obviously i charge for my services so take this with a grain of salt that's that's my how i've worked it um but you have to realize people need to live they need to pay their their rent or their mortgage or their food or their gas or their phone or whatever people need sure. to live so how are you how, where do you want to invest your time so either you have a regular job and you're like, oh, I'm a salesperson for whatever. Or I do marketing for whatever. And so I spend 45 hours a week doing my regular job because I don't believe that I should charge for healing. And I'll have like maybe three hours on a weekend to donate my time. But most of the time when people are doing it like that, they'll maybe do that for a couple months and then they're too tired. They're like, oh, I only have a day and a half off. Like, do I really want to spend my only day off? <laughs> like, which Costco is going to the grocery store and then doing this energy work, which is, you know, or this healing work, which is actually really a lot, but not charging. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so you can't help very many people when you're, when you're spending most of your time and energy doing something to pay your bills. You just right. can't. So you're, so you're taking the time that you could be spending helping people and reducing it because you have an ideology that says that you're not worthwhile or that you have to, in order to be spiritual, you have to give stuff away for free. Mm-hmm. Um, another thing that happens when you give things away for free, you pull in uh, not usually the best clients, not usually the best people. Um, what happens is those people don't value the service because they are not exchanging something for it. So we live in a system in which money has a, you, when we die and we're up on the other side, money doesn't mean anything. You could swim in it. You could, it doesn't mean anything, but here, what it is, is it's an exchange for energy, right? We've Mm -hmm. all decided on this idea that money is an exchange for energy and it is right. Some people work for 40 hours and then they have a certain level of money, you know, they're like, Oh, I got this exchange of energy. This is, we call it money, but really it's a, it's a, it's an energetic exchange, right? So I got this number value based on the energetic output that I, you know, put over here. So I got this over here, right? So that, that means somebody gets something for free. They don't usually value it very much. So mm-hmm. they don't, invest in it. They don't take it seriously. That And it could be anything, you know, you could give them a Picasso. And if they didn't know anything about art and they got it from a garage sale for like zero, they might be like, eh, burn it for firewood. Right. <laughs> it doesn't matter. You know, they, they, mm-hmm. they, they don't usually, but when you have an energetic exchange and the energetics is I worked for this money and here's the, en- the money energetics, right. We're accounting that as energy. And okay. here's this person putting in energy Um, and then they exchange that, then the person that invested in that is more invested in their healing. They're more invested in their growth. They're more invested in their training. They, they are more invested in it because they have to put in effort, right? Mm -hmm. So you're going to get someone who is less of, you know, if somebody wants everything for free and they're coming with, from kind of an entitled attitude then usually there's a, a victim kind of element to that, right? You right. know, when he's in victim, they're not going to be in a place where they're taking responsibility of their life. When you're not taking responsibility of your life, when you're not like the buck stops here, then what happens is it's a lot harder to, to grow. It's a lot harder to take spiritual steps. It's a lot harder to um, grow in your practice, you know, whatever the energy work is or, you know, whatever you do, it doesn't matter with, if it's energy work or if it's riding horses or if it's learning how to juggle, I don't care. Mm-hmm. Right. But but if you don't want to put in the time or the effort, you know, juggling, for example, you know, if you're like, oh, I'm a victim, I don't want to pay, I'm just going to do this. And, you know, if you're like expecting to just do it without doing any work, you're going to be dropping balls all over the place. But if a person exerts their energy,
energy and it's like, well, I'm going to take a class. I'll put in a hundred bucks or I'm going to practice every day for two hours juggling. Mm -hmm. They're in the energy in two different forms, but yeah. they're going to grow in that practice. So it's just, it's, it's all about, you know, and they're not, they're going to not be, you can have the person that's like, oh, I can't do it because, you know, of whatever, but they're coming from a victim place or you have the person that's like, oh, I'm not, I'm taking charge of this. I'm doing it. And they're not coming from a victim place. So it's very hard to grow when you don't want to be responsible. It's, I would, I think it's almost right. impossible. So, so that's, that's the first part of my answer as far as money okay. have any questions around anything that I said or. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Cause I know that we had spoken about that uh, during one of our last discussions. Um, I just, yeah, I have a, people, when I very first started my practice, <laughs> people would try to call and game me on that, you know, these, because the, people will, they'll, they'll, they'll kind of call and be like, well, you shouldn't be charging and you should give me for free. And you should do this. And I, you know, I definitely mm -hmm. had to work through some energy around it. And then finally I got a phrase. Sometimes you just, we call it blowing a picture. Finally, you just kind of move through the energy and then you're done and it never happens again. So I had this mm -hmm. kind of snarky girl who was trying to get free stuff <laughs> out of me and, I finally hit upon a phrase and then she laughed because she knew she was bullshit. So I was just like, listen, she's like, well, if you were a loving person, you would give me stuff for free. And I was like, listen, honey, when I can pay my phone bill with love, you give me a call back. And then she laughed because obviously I can't pay my phone with love. You know? <laughs> right. That's not the way this is set up. If it was, we'd all have little love meters oh, and we'd yeah. run around hugging everybody. But that's that's not the, the way that we we've set things up so that's right that is you know, exactly right which is probably good because then all the good looking people with you know all the hot sexy people all the people under a certain age <laughs> getting all the love and the old people be like where's my my love me you're so big <laughs> uh yeah I, I can just imagine seeing something like that and like oh brother i know it would be terrible right you'd go outside and everybody would be mauling you you can't be like, oh my god, okay, get off me. Go away, go away. Leave me alone. <laughs> There'd be all these arguments. Well, it wasn't really rape. I was just both <laughs> on <laughs> I think I should get my 50 love points. <laughs> oh Lord. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, a society like that, is like nope. <laughs> no, yeah. So we got this society, which it's always, you know, things are never oh, perfect, Lord. perfect. It's not supposed to be, but um, but yeah, it's you know, it works if you can kind of so it's just so as far as healers trying to practice and and it's really what happens is when you when you get to a point where you want to accept money. You know, there is a huge energetic hurdle that you go through to to reach that point because there's a because all of this stuff comes up in your space. Right. All of these past lives where maybe you were killed or, you know, maybe you, you know, so you have a lot of a bunch of spirits. Like if you think you're going to make a big impact, there's a whole bunch of, of energy that comes at you trying to make you not make that impact right? Because they like the game the way it's played. Right. So if you are not, that's another thing that comes up for people is if you are not capable enough of managing that massive wall of energy that comes at you, um, it's a lot harder to start a practice. So it's easy to kind of then fall into victim or, oh, blah, blah, blah. It's hard, you know, because really, there's this wall of stuff. I mean, even with my students, the more advanced ones, I'm like, please don't start doing professional readings till you graduate. Not because they're not capable. They're totally capable. You know, a year of learning mm -hmm. how to do this, they're totally capable. But it's that wall of energy. I want them. I, I tell them, I'm like, you guys are little sprouts, but I want you to be like, you know, coconut trees that can blow with the wind. Like, I want you to sure. be strong so when this energy hits you you know you're fine with it and they are fine with it if they kind of learn how to have strength within their own kind of energetic toolkit and can manage that so it's a big deal and you know the other thing is if somebody you know like oh do we want to control the little baby healers because they're not good enough to get out there if they're not good enough to get out there or they're not talented enough or they're not you know and there's lots of people out there trust me you go to the psychic fairs or you go to different places and there's a lot of people that don't know what they're doing i see them all over the place oh yeah you know but the thing is a lot of times you know they also don't it's, 
if people want to go to them, that's their people. You know, those those are the people. Usually, the people that are you know over time, the people that get results. You know, you know a tree bright's fruits, right? People mm -hmm. can talk to the pain, but if they're not really helping the person or people, then those people aren't going to come back. Right. So, you know, eventually things get kind of weeded out and and, you know, the people that that aren't really helping, you know, they're not going to get repeat customers and it's a lot of work yeah. to get customers. So, um, you know, so so that's that plays into it, too. And, you know, sometimes they're like, oh, and if they want to be out of victim, they can be like, oh, maybe I need to learn more. Or maybe I need to, you know, focus in this direction or that direction. And, you know, starting okay. a business is a lot of work and it's. Um, you know, there's a lot to it. And a lot of times it's like spaghetti against the wall. You try this, you try that, you try this, you try that. And then, oh, wait, look, it's stuck. People like it. Yep. I know what you're saying there. Now, with, like I said, with what's going on in around the world right now, uh, between your current class that you got going on right now to your past classes, uh, have you seen any difference? Because I know that with people learning how to work with energy i know that uh, it can sometimes lead to like sensory overload well um, I mean, that, that's not what i'm teaching i'm not i'm teaching people how to manage their senses so, mm -hmm. so they're not getting you know so that's what i'm teaching people i thought we right. take time so i'm not so no that my people are not okay they're not getting sensory overload from my classes they might be they're getting sensory overload from the world right I, that's for sure you know i mean i don't think yeah. you know, just blindly if you were like oh i'm just doing energy work but they're learning how to protect or how to manage what's going on inside of you before you start bringing in a bunch of other stuff i think that's too much i mean i see a lot of teachers out there that i think are doing sensory overload i see them advertising all the time they're like you know you don't know how to do anything but come and be a medium well that, that person is going to get those people into a lot of trouble mm -hmm. you know, uh, you know, oh, come and do ayahuasca. You know, yeah, those people are. So it, that's that gets into entity attachments, and right. when, when you get into a lot of, um, you know, people call it energy work, but it's not really. You know, that's moving into a different. You know, we're we're in a multidimensional mm -hmm. place, right? So mm -hmm. we're in a multidimensional world where there's a lot of multidimensional situations going on, and. And just like people are come in a wide variety, we've got a lot of different kinds of people. There's a lot of different kinds of, you know, um, non-physical beings. And right. um, when you open up the door for that uh, without preparation, um, it's it can lead to sensory overload, as you so kindly mm -hmm. put. Um, and it's, yeah. I personally don't think that's, uh, I, I don't think it's a healthy way to go. I think it's unhealthy yeah. way to go. But, you know, I mean, I think, you know, doing drugs is an unhealthy way to go. And I think, do you know, I think there's a lot of unhealthy. I think eating pork fries and banana, you know, banana ice cream all day is unhealthy. You know, it's not, I'm not the healthy police running around telling everybody how to live their life. Right. Think, you know, we're, we're a karmic world and people are making their mistakes or they're doing their thing or they're, you know, trying different stuff and falling down and making a mess of things and then moving on. And, and, you know, at the end of the day, when you pull, 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 pull back, you know, you know, ethically enough, you're like, okay, we're in a mishmash and everybody is follow, you know, they're on their own karmic journey. And, right. um, you know, when you look at enough past lives, you're like, you know, I've been a fuck up too. You know, I went and did stupid stuff too. It was a long time ago, but I certainly did it, you know? So, mm -hmm. so we've always had a lot of stuff going on here. That's part of the human soul's journey. You know, we've always had war. We've always had hate crimes. We've always had, you know, destruction. We've always had rape. We've always had drug use. We've always had murder. Mm -hmm. we've, this is, we've always had this. This is not new stuff. Oh, this yeah. is old stuff. So, you know, some lifetimes we, you know, fall down, we do it, we get up, we decide to do something. You know, we see people being polarized a lot within lifetimes, you know, in this lifetime, they're like, ooh, I, you know, I don't know. I did a lot of horrible things, you know, I feel really bad. So in this life, I'm gonna be a monk. I'm never ever gonna do anything bad again. And then in the next life, they're like, ah, oh, I was a monk, that was exhausting. I'm gonna, 
know, be a this, and I'm gonna, you know, sort of, I'm gonna have a, I don't know, I'm thinking, of, you know, I'll, I'll have a sexual fetish where I just wet people, but I don't really hurt them, you know, and then, then this one, they'll be like, oh, all right, well, that led to like a non-connection, so how do I have a connection? But, you know, people bounce back and forth trying to find what we call neutrality, mm. trying to get neutral to both sides, trying to get out of resistance, trying to release their karma from lifetimes they've had in the past, you know, and, and that's a big part of why we're here is to move through things. But, right. um, but back to this whole idea of people and healers and finding their, you know, finding their levels and, you know, obviously, you know, obviously the more training you have that, you know, I've seen people get online and I remember, you know, out of my discipline, which is, uh, initially stems from a guy named Lewis Bostwick out of the Berkeley Psychic Institute. I mean, I've seen people get online and be like, all those people are old funny daddies from the seventies, which I'm not from the seventies. I mean, <laughs> I'm not that old funny daddy. She wasn't talking about me, but you know, he was like young whippers, you know, whatever. He was like, oh, I know how to make a good website and I can get online and I can do, I can do it better. Well, good for you. You know, that's Ooh, like, a it. go for it. <laughs> I don't know whatever happened to his business. <laughs> I don't know if he ever figured out. Because there's a lot more to it, you know? It's always easy on the outside to go, oh, I could do it. Because oh, yeah. people are looking at a tiny little piece of something, right? They're not looking at the whole, you know, right. like, you know, like with me. They're like, oh, I saw you teaching a class or doing an interview. You know, they're not seeing me sitting around. You know, I'm not a computer person. So they're not like seeing all the times that you're like, the stupid, you know, code isn't working for the free readings and sitting around with the website for four hours trying to get shit to work. Or, you know, they're not seeing all of the other mountain of crap, you know, that, that you go through to have the two hours of, you know, having a lot of fun teaching class, you know. Oh, yeah. So, you know, people can try and if they get people to go there, they get people to go there. And if the people that go there are like, oh, I want to go to some place that has other people, then, you know, they'll go there. Okay. Oh, now when it comes to, say, for instance, you've got new people that are just starting out and coming to your class. Um, do they ask questions about other, like, other trained professionals that they can also get input from? Well, I mean, no, I mean, I don't have my school set up that way. So no, they're not coming to my classes and asking about other people. Um, but I mean, I kind of have a rule for that, you know, so at the beginning, um, I'm kind of like, let's not do that, you know, because I, I, I don't want to vet I'm not going to have some and I've had people try to do that where they're like, Oh, so and so is really good with X. Unless I've personally been to a class like that or been to that person, I don't want people right. to sit around. You know, A, it's rude because it was a lot of oh, yeah. you know, time and energy and my marketing money and my marketing stuff to get people in the door and then somebody's going to do that. But beyond the rude factor, I don't want to align my business and me really with um, somebody else's work if I don't know exactly what they're doing. So, um, and if I'm totally in agreement with it. And um, so, yeah, I, I try not to have that be going on at, at my school just because I, I don't know um, who these people are. And there's naughty psychics. There's naughty people out there. There's, oh, yeah. you know, there's yeah. people that are like, oh, come to me and, you know, buy my candle and give me $5,000 and take a bath and think of all the bad stuff and pour some salt in there. And, you know, and then, and then I'll get rid of the evil spirit that's been with you for 10 centuries and holding your family down because you've been cursed. You right. know, you're done with that. Come back and give me another 5,000 and another 5,000. And you no, know, I mean, there's, there's people that do that out there. I'm not, you know, I, I, yeah. So I try to keep my people nice and safe and comfortable and right. nice and strong before they can kind of, I mean, but I do, I've had, I had a student recently that he, he rebelled, you know, he's rebelling and everything. <laughs> but, uh, and he was like, I'm going to go to this person. I was like, I highly recommend against it. But if you went and he's like, wow, well, they wanted exactly this. They wanted $5,000 and she's this and uh -huh. they wanted that and da 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 da, -da. And uh -huh. You were absolutely right. And I'm like, yeah. But, you know, I mean, I want my people to be um, 
not like little automatons that just listen to everything I say, you know, they need to mm -hmm. find stuff out for themselves, you know, I mean, right. you know, they have, I mean, I have my rules of like, don't do this, but I'm not, you know, I'm probably a too much of a softy in some ways, but I'm not, <laughs> you know, I'm like, whatever you did it. Yeah, I'm glad you didn't pay the $5,000. Like, whatever. Oh yeah. No kidding. <laughs> I'm like, no, you did not pay. That. But it was a lot of work. You know, he had, he actually got walloped by this person. They, they did a, they did a very, very nasty number on him energetically. Oh, so I had to, yeah. I had to undo a bunch of programming and stuff. So, so anyway, so, but, but, you know, people learn their lessons. You know, yeah. people need to learn a different way. Oh, that's good. I mean, at least people are getting the confidence that what you're trying to teach them and show them is the right way of going about things and building up their self confidence so that they feel uh, comfortable and, yeah, being able to see this stuff or what's going on and yeah, yeah. Being taken advantage of yeah i mean ultimately that's what i'm teaching people is how to you know that's one of the big benefits of learning how to see things clairvoyantly and do you know do kind of high-end healing do programming that kind of stuff is they can read situations for themselves and try to you know and see what's going on and and make their own decisions you know i don't want to i don't want them calling me every single i mean <laughs> <laughs> they can. I don't want them not calling me if they have a problem. But I, I think it's great if they, you know, I, I, ultimately I want them to 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 learn how to look at all that stuff on their own. And not that people don't sometimes, you know, feel like they need a, a, a you know. I don't say. Uh, have you ever you know, gotten those feeling or whatnot? But but at the same time, you know, ultimately I want them to have confidence in their own abilities. Right. Well, to say, have you ever had students give you a call out of the blues? Uh, I finally got it. I don't know what it is. What is it? Well, no. okay. When, especially when, okay, when they're, uh, uh, based when they're coming to realize uh, or having a spiritual awakening of some sort. Well, they, they've had those all the time. I mean, so yeah. So my school, we have, we have magical, wonderful things happening at the school all the time. So we're, you know, it's, there's a lot of miracles going on. So yeah. So they're, they're constantly having, spiritual awakenings and lots and lots of aha moments as time goes on, you know, and, mm -hmm. and it really depends on them and their experience. And, and, you know, if it's a past life, aha, or a current life, you know, but we're all like onions. So they're releasing different and different and different layers of the onions as time goes on. And then they, they, yeah, they really transform. I'm really proud of them, you know, but you know, you have to realize, like, I feel like a lot of this is like pebbles in a pond, right? right. So, so some, you know, I mean, I put out a lot of free stuff too, right? There's free meditations. If your people want to get on there, they can get on my website. They can go, they can get free meditations. They can get free student readings. They can get, you know, we do the first night is always free. So there's all, you know, and those are all like pebbles in, in a pond, you know, and that, you know, and so people learn a little bit. It's like planting seeds. And then sometimes people will take the beginning classes and those, you know, when, and they shift, if somebody just shifts a little bit, that's what, that could have a ripple effect. You know, I always right. feel like those people are making shifts in the world, you know, and just, just by having, just, just changing how they approach things can, can have a big ripple effect. Um, but those people, you know, but then sometimes they just take the beginning classes and they're like, oh, this is, this is the level I'm at. This is where I'm at. This is how far right. I want. And then sometimes there's people that are like, no, I really see how this works and I really want to get into it. And they, they take the longer program and they kind of really invest um, in shifting their state and shifting their spirit so that they can mm -hmm. manage their life and their spirit and their energetic system and the world in a whole different way. But it's not, um, it's not kind of a little, it's not a, that's <laughs> not as uh, how do I phrase this? It's um, I I mean I think it's really exciting stuff, but it's not for everybody. You know, not everybody oh. is wanting to transform like that or is right. excited. You know, or not everybody's soul is really not everybody's ready to be responsible for their lives. You know, that's true. That's very true. All right, we're going to take a quick uh, commercial break here and then uh, hear from our sponsors. Definitely want to say. Uh, Welcome and good evening to Akasha. She's tuning in tonight. Uh, appreciate you uh, being a part of the chat. 
And for anybody else out there who's tuning in, feel free to come join us in chat. I think you'll do definitely enjoy this episode. So don't go nowhere. We'll be right back right after these messages. Do you like listening to new music and getting to know the creators of these new songs you're hearing? Hi, this is Ginger Ackley. Come listen to my latest releases right here at IAPN Radio and Prairie Land Radio Network. I love sharing music with all of you. Thank you for tuning in. What's going on, everybody? Cloud the Pagan Rapper here, and you're listening to Iowa Pagan News Radio. I just walked into this coffee shop. You'll never guess what I found. All the help is deeply engrossed in metaphysical times. You should, too. I'm at the Egyptian, 475 Park Avenue in Idaho Falls, Idaho. You get your very own coffee for free, and we're open till 10. Sister Moon, Apothecary, and more is a collaboration of local island witches bringing you handcrafted tools for ritual, amazing apothecary, custom vinyl work, merchandise, and so much more. But we are not just an online store. We are a sisterhood, a platform, and a voice for everything that is magical. Join us for our famous Tarot Tuesdays from 11 to 4 Eastern Standard Time for a discounted reading with our amazing in-house intuitive reader and priestess, Wolf Spirit Energy, Beverly Oberlin. You can find us on Facebook at Sister Moon Store or on the web at sistermoon.shop. So fly on over and stop in for a spell. Okay, now a couple of uh, words about uh, Sister Moon. They have changed their Tarot Tuesday from during the daytime to during the evenings. So be sure to uh, catch uh, their Tarot Tuesdays on Tuesday evenings now instead of during the daytime. Uh, a lot more people are tuning in then. And then also with the Metaphysical Times newspaper, be sure to pick up a copy. Uh, become a distributor. Um, it's well worth it. It's a fantastic publication. Uh, I'm glad to be a part of it as the new Midwest distributor for uh, the Metaphysical Times newspaper. If you have questions, uh, feel free to reach out to Christy directly at uh, Metaphysical Times, and I'll be posting that up here. Uh, give me a second here. Oh, here we go. Uh, just feel free to reach out to them at uh, metaphysical ti- uh, metaphysical-times.com. Send a note to Christy. Tell her that you're interested in becoming a distributor. She would love to hear from you. Okay, now back to our discussion. And also want to say good evening to Jessica. She's tuning in tonight as well. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, Now, that last question that I was asking about, uh, if you've ever had those phone calls during random times with the aha moments and uh, with uh, having your students having spiritual awakenings, because... I remember uh, my friend uh, Ed, he's also a teacher, and he said that he he recalls one student of his called him at 2 o'clock in the morning and said that, I got it. It's like, oh, spiritual awakening. Call me back later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I probably wouldn't have been picking up the phone. No. I, yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah, I, I, uh, yeah, boundaries. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, yeah, I mean, that's one of the things you learn as a teacher and as a healer is that you, you start having to get firmer and firmer boundaries as time goes on because, <laughs> but students definitely do have, um, ha- have a lot of awakenings and you never know when, um, you know, you're planting seeds of thoughts and seeds of ideas or belief systems and it's up to them if they want to grow the seed of that. But sometimes you say something and then they don't get something till five years later or they don't get something till the next year or they don't mm-hmm. get something till you say it 30 million times and then they finally get it. And they're like, oh, my God, that's what that means. <laughs> you know? So, mm-hmm. yeah, 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 that for sure happens. And, um, you know, I think um, 
it's it's interesting as a teacher because obviously you're doing it because you want to help people or be, well there's lots of people that are doing it for different reasons but um i personally like watching them grow it feels it's very satisfying to see people take mm -hmm. steps and to see them grow but at the same time um i've had to learn not to invest too much of my own personal uh just how I'm doing, you know, how my kind of like, yeah. how am I doing? I have to, I've had to kind of pull back and, and because with that, because then you're too invested in and right. taking their steps and, you know, people do that in their own time. Okay. Now, have you had your students reach out to you when, uh, uh, when they're troubled about something while they're uh, oh, yeah. learning their abilities? Oh yeah, all the time. I mean, we have a really comprehensive program. So it's, I mean, that's like when I, when I was saying you people have no idea what it's going, I mean, they're every week they're like, how do I deal with this? Or how do I deal with that? Or I can't do this or I can't do that. Or, you know, it's like, it's a mm -hmm. confidence. So yeah, we have a, a, you know, a system, we call it energy checks. So we have a system set up where, you know, they can get people, you know, lots of different people can look at them. So we have assistants, we have, we have other teachers, we have me, you know, so yeah, so there's a whole system set up. So when people are, you know, I, I have teacher hours where if they, they can ask questions every single week and, you know, depending on, I mean, if, if it's the beginning classes, then people have me during class so they can just ask questions if they're not getting stuff. And, um, and then with the clairvoyant program, I have teacher hours every week and then, and then we can always mm -hmm. read clairvoyantly read what's happening with them and see what's going on with them and, and help them so that they can better get whatever it is they're trying to learn. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a they're constantly, yeah, every week. <laughs> now, with you yourself being an instructor, yeah. I know that uh, over the years that you've been doing this, that yeah. you have had to have had to have taken downtime from, from time to time just to give yourself a break. Less than you would think, but I try. <laughs> <laughs> So what's the question? <laughs> <laughs> I, was saying, is, I know that when it comes to teachers that, I mean, yeah, it comes to a point where it's like, you only either have to take downtime or else you need to figure out some way to manage the uh, energy that you're dealing with. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's both. I mean, A, I teach how to manage the energy that I'm dealing with. So I, I, mm -hmm. I it's easier for me to manage it because that's what I teach. I have a lot of tools that go into managing all of that. And so, um, and it gets easier and easier as the years go on because I kind of raise up my vibration or I learn, you know, I have different ways of managing that. Um, and then at this point, I'm really, really thrilled to have um, some, some, some other teachers that I've trained to kind of start start working at the school. So now they're starting to to kind of raise up their level and kind of, you know, get um, start teaching classes and start being able to do some of the stuff that I used to do all by myself. So I'm very grateful for that as well. Um, but, you know, we're at an interesting time in human history and there's, um, you know, and I just, I feel like it's, it's important to be doing this work and to be trying to help mm -hmm. kind of manage what's happening around them, you know, right now. So, um, so I, you know, probably I'm not taking as many breaks as I should, <laughs> um, should being the, you know, I, I, um, yes. yeah, I yeah, yeah. it's, it's <laughs> what I could have, you know, the, the truth is I so love what I do. You know, when you, I, they've done all kinds of crazy studies when you're really passionate and when you really love what you do, um, you can kind of manage at a higher level of stress or you can manage at a higher level of workload than somebody who doesn't enjoy what they do. Not that I enjoy, I don't enjoy taxes, for example. I don't enjoy everything that I do, <laughs> but I do enjoy so much of the readings and the healings and the, the teaching and, um, you know, the, the, I, I do love it. And so it's, a lot of it is is um and st is stuff that i that i appreciate and so um so it's it is what it is <laughs> so okay now what would be words of advice to someone who is thinking about taking your classes just take them <laughs> <laughs> i don't know what do you mean advice give me well give me okay um uh, 
for somebody who is thinking about taking it, but unsure of if they would be able to do this or not, uh, have the confidence in their own abilities. Uh, they don't need confidence. They don't need any of that. They just need to sign up. If this learning how to be psychic and learning how to open up your intuitive, this is all a human ability. That's that's all just it's human. And we all have this in us. We all and it comes in differently for everybody, but everybody is dealing with energy. We're all dealing with energy. This is just this is what's always happened, always will happen. It's a part of humanity. It's part of what we do. It's part of why we're so amazing. So you learn in, but everybody, it comes in differently. Some people are clairaudient where they can hear energy. Some people can feel energy. Some people are empaths and they feel it in different ways. Some people see it. Some mm -hmm. people see spirit. Some people don't see some spirit. You know, it's different. So at the beginning, they're learning a, a tool set in order to manage that. Because you don't want to start opening up unless you have a way to manage what you're doing, what you're seeing, right? You got, right. You got to do that. That's that, it's to, you know, got to, lots of people do it without doing that. But I think it's better to, to learn how to start managing energy before you bring more energy in, right? So right. they're learning how to manage it. And so that's basically, you know, whether they really want to pursue a healing modality or a spiritual modality or learning how to be more intuitive modality, um, I would say just, you know, it, it all just starts at the very beginning. So really the, the question at the beginning is, do I want to start with the intuitive meditation or the energetic healing? And if somebody's really kind of like, I can't decide, then I would say start with the intuitive meditation class. Um, but if they're, if they're really wanting them, the energy healing, can <laughs> Hello. It's all feeling the energy. Uh, over there. My, my technical advisor. Um, <laughs> animals are hilarious. Um, they always like the energy. You know, they're always, they when people ground or do energy tools and stuff, they're always like jumping in their space or getting underneath their grounding cords or, you know, all mm -hmm. of that. Um, yeah. But yeah, I would say that. I would say, you know, just I, there isn't there isn't any advice except just do it, you know, or maybe just get out of your heads. You know, the other thing I would say is, um, I mean, they're going to learn how to deal with ideas of perfection or you know any of that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Sometimes people are like, I got to be really good, or you know, before I can do stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not they don't need to be good before they're going to learn yeah. how to, to grow into that. You know, so it's just kind of trying to move past all the fear and just just sign up you know that's right. it just do they're gonna learn how to deal with stuff <laughs> all to do is just take that leap you know and i'm not saying that because i like you know i'm like oh yeah I'll just get for money it's more just like you know you'll learn how to manage it it's just getting through the wall of fear before you know they sign right. up you know i mean i don't know that is the way you, you were like you know what advice do you have I'm like i don't know just sign up. <laughs> okay you know. Okay, now I have been uh, posting up uh, the links that we've got for you for uh, in, uh, the uh, uh, Intuitive uh, Academy. So yep. I've got that posted up, plus uh, the main cat. website, uh, the CavanaCharlotte.com, where uh, you can find a bunch of good information. And you can all, uh, they can also go to your website and they can find uh, all your services that you have to offer. And I'll tell you what, you have more services to offer than, frankly, a lot of other people that I've seen over the years. Oh, are you looking at my at my private reading page? Yeah. Yeah, it's so funny because I used to just have readings and healings, like because I I mush it all together, and then um, I I was started get getting you know my students would be like, oh, I went to this person that did baby readings. I'm like, I could do that. Why didn't you call me? Oh, you do that? I'm like, yes, I can do that. Or oh, I went to this the person did angel readings. I'm like, I can do that. They're like, you do. So finally I was like, all right, screw I'm just going to put down <laughs> all the things I do. And it's fun. You know, now they're calling me for that. And it's fun because like, like with the baby, you know, it's just, it's nice to mix it up and have people call for some of the specifics sometimes. And right. like, there's a fun little baby story. I had a, I don't, maybe I said this, if I told this story before, then stop me. But I had a, a, a student, longtime client, um, she got pregnant, you know, so we had kind of been working, you know, to her pregnancy. And when she did the ultrasound, they saw that the baby had um, his feet were kind of going to be clubbed feet. 
Mm. And so, and he was, you know, in utero and she's like, what do we do? I'm like, well, why don't we give him a healing? Let's see. You never know. Let's see what happens. And so we gave him a little healing while he was still forming and, um, he came out with no club feet, you know? So, you know, that when I say there's miracles that happen all the time, but I mean, that's not me. That's just me kind of doing some energy work and communing with spirit. Right. You know, that's God, that's God working through me. That's not me. You know, I'm not saying I did that, you know, I'm just a conduit, but, um, but stuff like that is really, you know, when those kind of things happen, you're like, Oh, you know, like it's just, it makes you feel good, you know? So, um, so, so that was a fun little story, but yes, I do a lot of service <laughs> and it's all, you know, I do a lot of services. I have a lot of skills as a, as a healer for sure. Excellent. And also, uh, now with people wanting to get in contact with you, is the, the main site, uh, the best one to go to, or we'll they can also contact you on Facebook as well, right? Um, uh, Facebook's probably the worst place to contact me. Um, I'm not on there very much. Hmm, okay. Uh, Facebook's just gotten kind of weird. So I don't, I don't know. I just don't go on there much, but, um, the best place to contact me is through the website. And if they want to sign up and get free student readings or kind of, you know, go look at, you know, there's a couple meditations and stuff that I, I you know, I tried to aim for people with no tools, right? Because people don't have any tools. I mean, mm -hmm. they're new people. So, um, so I, I did some meditations for, for people with that, you know, and so if they want to get in there and kind of play, obviously those are for people with no tools. Like, obviously they're going to learn a lot of tools in the classes. So it's always kind of a challenge to be like, how do I talk to people with no tools and get them to go from A to B, you know, mm -hmm. so I, I was, I rose up to the challenge and gave it a shot and with some meditations and stuff that are all free on there as well. So, yeah. Excellent. Excellent. I'll tell you what, I've, I've enjoyed the times that uh, I've got to sit down and spend time with you and, uh, is basically I consider you to be a good friend now. Aww. Uh, <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> and you're one of the people that, uh, when especially people coming to me and ask me about so stuff like this, that hey, this is who you need to go see, this is who you need to go talk to. <laughs> so, uh, I'm glad that I'm actually able here to be able to do that for people and to get them pointed in the right direction. Oh, well, thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. And thank you so much for having me on. I appreciate that too, very much. Well, you are very welcome. And uh, I'll definitely be staying in touch. Awesome. I think this is going to, uh, I think this is going to end off our three part series. So, okay. <laughs> but uh, yeah, if we do come up with anything in the near future, uh, yeah, feel free to reach out. Let me know about it. All right, will do. Thank you so much. You are very welcome. Thank you for taking time out. This has been another edition of Iowa Pagan News on the Prairie Land Radio Network. We've been uh, talking with our friend Kavina Charlotte from the uh, Intuitive Path Academy. And uh, there is a lot that you can learn from Kavina. Uh, be sure to go to her website. If you do have uh, questions for her, shoot her an email. Uh, check out everything on her website. It'll answer a bunch of questions for you. Have a good night, folks. As always, keep everyone safe around you. Now that spring is here, try to get outside and enjoy the weather, even though uh, <clears throat> Mother Nature still has not made up her mind yet what she wants to do yet. But we're going to get there, I have a feeling. Have a good night, folks. We are going to be out of here for the night. Appreciate you tuning in. Thank you for tuning in to today's broadcast. All shows are recorded and available for download at plrdn.podbean.com. All rights are reserved and may not be replayed without written permission by IAPN Radio Management. Come join us at our new group, IAPN Radio on Facebook, where you can be kept up to date for future broadcasts. Pleasant journeys, everyone.